I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good afternoon. As we come together to celebrate this Eucharist, we celebrate how our Lord frees us from sin and death, and from whatever imprisonment we may experience in our own daily lives, so that we ourselves, in freedom and truth, may be able to proclaim the gospel message. Let us take a few moments then and ask the Lord to forgive us for those times when we have built up our own walls of imprisonment and ask for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you come down from heaven to give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess an unending love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, Go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin and the full senate of the children of Israel and went to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. So they came back and reported, We found the jail securely locked, and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them, as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him, that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. 
The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We ourselves are called to not only prefer the light, but to live our lives in the light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Over the last few days, we have heard from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, which is Jesus' encounter, his dialogue, and ultimately his monologue to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was an official, a religious official, who comes to Jesus in the dark of night. And he comes to Jesus in the dark of night because he is fearful. He is fearful of retribution, of what other officials might do to him. And so in this dialogue, and ultimately what turns into a monologue with Jesus, is Jesus explains to Nicodemus and to us all that we ourselves are all called to be born from above, to be born again. And in that dialogue, Nicodemus asks the question, how can one be born again? And Jesus goes on to explain that the rebirth that we all experience is made possible by that mercy poured out by God in the person of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that mercy can clearly be seen on the cross itself, in Jesus' own suffering and death. From his suffering and death comes new life in the resurrection. And from the cross itself, in Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection, flows the blood of the cross to the font of baptism. We are washed clean in the blood of the cross. We are made new in Christ's once and for all sacrifice on the cross. We ourselves then are called to live our lives in the light of Jesus Christ. To not live in fear or worry or anxiety. And we hear that so beautifully stated to us in today's psalm. Psalm 24. Take the opportunity to read the entire psalm today if you have a chance. It is a beautiful psalm. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Would we all define ourselves these days as the poor? I think so. To be poor in spirit 
as we hear in the Beatitudes when Jesus gave his wonderful Sermon on the Mount, does not mean to be without, it means to be humble. So when the Lord hears the cry of the poor, he hears the cry of the humble. And we certainly have been humbled these days. Everything that we thought we created, everything that we thought we were able to make happen and come true, we have come to learn and understand that everything ultimately relies on the Lord. And all good things come from the Lord. So as the poor, as the humble of heart, we cry out to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we ourselves ask to move from darkness to light as Nicodemus himself did. Because in coming in the dark at night, he ultimately sees the light. And he becomes a believer in Jesus Christ. And when we become true believers in Christ, we do precisely what the apostles did in that first reading today. There are no chains that can imprison us. There are no walls that can keep us in. We ourselves are free. And our freedom comes from the cross of Jesus Christ itself. So if you're anxious, if you're worried, if you're fearful, it's understandable. But remember what Jesus did for those apostles. He sent the angels to release them from their prison. He sends his angels to us today. Not only as individuals. Not only as the faithful. Not only as parish communities gathered together. Not only as the church universal. Not only as a nation. But the entire world. The Lord hears the cry of the Humbled by being in the presence of our Savior Jesus Christ, we bring before him all of our prayers and our needs. We pray for our Holy Church, for Francis our Pope, for Edward our Bishop, for all bishops, clergy, and religious, that as they themselves are called to witness as the apostles did in the town square, that they would have the same courage and strength to speak the truth of God's words to all the nations of the world, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders, for our president, for our governors, for our federal, state, and local officials. As they now begin to make the decisions of reopening our nation, that they may do so with prudence and with guidance through the Holy Spirit, caring for each and every one of us for our well-being and our health, our financial needs, as well as our emotional needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering emotionally, those who are struggling from depression during these times, those who feel isolated, those who are anxious and worried and filled with fear, that they may find release from their suffering through the Savior who gives healing to us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have been afflicted with the coronavirus, that they may find health and well-being, and that the Savior may touch them through the power of the Holy Spirit to bring that healing to its completion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our children during these times, that they may be filled with a hope and a joy and that our own lives as adults may witness to that to them, not causing them further anxiety or fear, but helping them to have comfort and release. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of the parishioners of St. Michael the Archangel Church and St. Jude the Apostle Church, that their prayers may be heard and that they may find comfort and peace in knowing that our Savior is with them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially for Bill Keegan, for the Capia Bianco family, for Catherine Nash, and for Stanley Dorsky, and for Mary Galuski, that they may enjoy the glory and the peace that is the resurrection. We pray to the Lord, 
Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own prayers, those that are spoken and those that are unspoken in the secret of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we are humbled in your sight, and we thank you this day for this Eucharist that we ourselves are able to celebrate. May your body and blood continue to give us the nourishment and strength that we need to endure these difficult times. We ask this as all things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, true to the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring it of the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with St. Jude the Apostle, and with all your saints, who please you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We continue now with our prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And our novena prayer to St. Jude the Apostle. O holy St. Jude, Apostle and Martyr, great in virtue and rich in miracles, near kinsman of our Lord Jesus Christ, faithful intercessor of all who invoke your special patronage in time of need, to you I have recourse in the depth of my heart, and humbly beg to whom God has given such great power to come to my assistance. Help me in my present and urgent petition. In return, I promise to make your name known and cause you to be invoked. St. Jude, pray for us all and all who invoke your aid. Amen. Have a good day.